Uh, good afternoon, Bob Chapman. Welcome to 560 KWTO, the talk of the Ozarks. How are you doing, sir? Well, I'm doing fine, thank you. Nice to be here again. And yes, uh, we had our president speak again today. And uh, he uh, indicated that there would be some sort of a, uh, an agreement coming. And as you just said, the Senate wants to raise taxes. I think that's fine, uh, but uh, I hope they cut about $8 trillion off the budget deficit, which they would take out of the budget over the next five to eight years. But we're not going to see that. They're not serious about that. This is all political theater. Uh, they're jacking for position, and uh, they'll get their deal, so to speak. And interestingly enough, the stock market's been strong because of that, because they, at, in Wall Street and in banking, are the ones that give the instructions to uh, the Federal Reserve and the Treasury. So uh, they make the inside information, and because of that, they're ahead of the curve all the time, and they always make money because they cheat. Well, anyway, uh, today we saw a almost 200-point rally, and that was because uh, there's anticipation that this thing is going to get passed, and that would mean the spending of more money, the more looseness in what is done within government. And it's not good for the economy, but they're going to do it anyway. One of the interesting things today was that commodities were up because of that, naturally so. But what happened was, uh, as soon as the president spoke, uh, they knocked gold down about $20, and silver was down about a dollar. They came back during the course of uh, the trading during the uh, August uh, gold outside contract, the most active one and in September in silver. And so you can see our government is very busy at work rigging markets all the time because gold and silver should have gone up. Bob, I have a chart in front of me that I just uh, produced. Yesterday, gold was at a record high, world record, 1607, which means that the dollar was at a record low. Today, they... they uh, they caused it to drop to 15.89. Silver was at uh, forty dollars seventy cents yesterday. Today it's at 39.45. But here's the point. The point is both of the charts for gold and silver have they look identical right at the end of the NYMEX close, two o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Both charts took a straight down nosedive, gold and silver, simultaneously. It's, and that's called manipulation. Yeah, that's, that's the point I'm, I'm trying to make. It's absolutely... And by our government, and it goes on all the time, has since 1988, until we can stop it through Congress or by some other means, and they've got to continue to do it. Yeah. There are no rules. But the good part is it lasts about two days. <laughs> It'll turn around and run, run right back up again. Well, you know, Congress <clears throat> duped President Reagan back in the early 80s, if you remember correctly, Bob, with this same type of proposal. They promised this long, decade-long uh, deficit reduction uh, for some small tax increases, and it didn't happen. And now we're seeing a replay of it again, and it's really not designed to appease uh, Republicans in Congress, in my opinion. It's designed to appease uh, the public, the public sentiment now, to so people won't focus on on this issue any longer, so they can go about what they've done for the last twenty, thirty years: spin, spin, spin. And that's correct. They have no intention of cutting anything, and it's as simple as that. Hey, Bob, we're gonna we're gonna have to take a quick break here, and then we'll come back and we'll talk a, a little bit more about this issue and a lot of other issues as well. And uh, so, please stay tuned. You're listening to USA Prepares on 560 AM KWTO, the talk of the Ozarks. I'm Mark Wright. I'm here with Vincent Finelli. We'll return in a minute.
Alaska.com. <laughs> No whining. Only expert guests and seasoned opinions. Instruction that matters. At the controls, Vincent Finelli and Mark Wright. And we are back on USA Prepares. This is Mark Wright. I'm here with the original survival economist, Vincent Finelli. And it is a no wine Tuesday because we have international forecasters. Bob Chapman on the phone. And if you would like to get a free copy, a trial edition of Bob Chapman's premier newsletter, just email us at the usaprepares.com website or give us a call uh, or a text at 417 200 4715. This is stuff you didn't learn in school, Vincent Finelli. And so people ought to take advantage of. Uh, Bob Chapman's experience and skill and education and learn more about what's really happening in this economy and what's really happening in Congress right now. You bet. I get uh, I get to read our family's copy twice a week. So does everybody in the family. Bob, I'd like to <laughs> I'd like to talk about something that just blows my mind. Ben Bernanke uh, we, was uh, was questioned by Ron Paul, Representative Ron Paul from Texas on Wednesday, on Capitol Hill, whether he thought gold was money. And the Federal Reserve Chairman, Ben Bernanke, thought about it for a few seconds, and then he said, no, it's not money. It's a precious metal. What do you think? I think that uh, Mr. Bernanke was not telling the truth. (laughs) (laughs) That's an understatement, Bob. (laughs) Now, number one, we don't know whether they got any gold in their depositories, because there has been no outside audit since 1954. And gold is the antithesis of what is called fiat currencies. So he doesn't want to give gold any more validity than he can help to give it. And so he's not going to say it's anything other than a barbaric relic. And, uh, of course, we know better than that. But uh, he has a license to lie, and he takes advantage of it. Bob, I, I went to uh, seven banks in the last two weeks. I went to seven banks to open a, an account for uh, our corporation. And uh, all we wanted to have was a checking account, and I said we do not want to borrow money. All we want to do is have a checking account. But... There's a couple things that we would like. One is we would like no nuisance fees because we're allergic to nuisance fees. And we said we are not going to use plastic on this account. There will be no debit card use whatsoever. All transactions will be done with paper, paper checks, paper statements, and uh, transfers. But we had one other, one other requirement, and that was that the bank that we work with would be giving a seminar, one each day, two seminars per expo that we have to teach children how to save money and how a bank works with deposits and withdrawals. It's only been two weeks, and we can't get a single taker. Not one bank will work with us. I don't think they want to be bothered, and they know by your questions that you know what they're up to. And I don't want you around. They really don't. And I'm, I'm serious. I have gone to every bank that's convenient uh, to our travel pattern. And they re- it's unbelievable. The, I've, I've asked to talk to the presidents of each of these banks, and, and he's always in a meeting or he's out of the office. And finally, I said this morning, I said to one of the ladies in the lobby, I said, you know what? You guys are like the government. You're exactly like the government. Nobody here can make a decision about anything. It's unbelievable. It's frustrating. Uh. <laughs> uh, hey, why don't we open our own bank? Okay, let's do that. We should open a bank that actually caters to customers and provides a service and, and uses local funds and reinvests them back in our community rather than sending them off to New York City I and like abroad. It. I think we need to push for a state bank in uh, the Missouri legislature. What do you think about that idea, Bob? Is that is that? Oh, well, that would be a good idea. Can we get you on the board of directors? I don't think so. 
<laughs> I think you they, have to be they present won't take that. boards of directors, people who are over seventy five. So I'm out. No. Oh, you're out, drats. We'll, we'll we'll change the law just for you, though, Bob. There's an exemption. Hey, Matt, I mean, Obama puts exemptions all the time in the law. How come we can't do that for you? Well, I I abide by the Constitution. He doesn't. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Well, Bob, where do we go with uh, with the news? What's happened that you've you've discovered through your intel? Well, first of all, uh, I don't think they're much further ahead in Europe on solving their problem, uh, which is not only Greece, now it's uh, back to Ireland and Portugal, and now Italy and Spain will follow, and then Belgium. And uh, they're finally looking at all the numbers, and uh, we gave them the numbers, and these people in the European Parliament do read the forecaster, and I'll tell you how I know a uh, writer uh, from the LaRoche Group, uh, uh, Holly Schlanger, uh, who I've known for a long time, and he's a subscriber. And he was telling another host that when he was there in Brussels, they were mostly in kind of like groups from each country, and he was talking to all of them and taking notes, et cetera. And uh, one group said, well, the thing we like most about what comes over the radio is Bob Chapman. (laughs) And so uh, the people in the European Parliament know what we're talking about here. Uh, uh, These programs get carried all over the world now. And um, once you've built up a reputation for being right and telling the truth, they really want to hear what you have to say. And uh, so we are making inroads because we're informing people as to who the enemy is and what they're up to. And that's why they can't get any further uh, on this debt situation. Uh, It was about a year and a quarter ago. I said, it's going to cost the solvent nations in Europe about $4 trillion to sort out the problems of those six countries. Now... The next step was that Germany came out and said, oh, it'll cost a trillion. I changed my uh, estimate five or six weeks ago, and I said, um, what we're going to see here uh, is um, probably four to six trillion. It's hard to tell, but it'll be in that area. And so up jumps Germany, and they say it's going to cost 3.5 trillion. They are getting closer. But the point is this. It's unpayable by the people who have made the debt. It's unrelievable by the people who can help them because if they do $4 trillion or more, they're all going to be broke. So they don't want to make a deal because they know the deal is worthless and they want a long-term solution. And uh, people in the countries are screaming you know, we don't want this anymore. We're going to take our losses. We want out of this thing. And so that's where it's at. And they're having two meetings this week. And I don't think they're going to get much of anywhere. The real problem is the banks. They're trying to save the banks. And the banks are all broke, and they know that. And uh, this is why, like in the United States, 70% of the assets and deposits of American banks are controlled by 11 banks or 10, one or the other. I mean, that's horrendous because that makes them too big to fail. Switching back to Europe, you get the same problem, too big to fail. So what are they going to do? I really don't know, but the longer they drag it on, the worse the system is going to be under pressure, and they're going to continue to be in trouble the European, uh, I should say the Eurozone, is crumbling. It's going to collapse. I don't know how long it will take, because you never know with these things, but it's coming down. And I think people are going to be forced in those different countries to switch back to their original currencies. They're going to have to default in total. And uh, the dream of a one-world currency, and a united Europe 
uh, under the European Union, 